Hey guys, welcome to another Out of Spec Bits episode. You join me here at the main stage at this event that we're at called ACT Expo. It's basically a clean transportation thing. And we're about to go sit in on a presentation to be given by Dan Priestley, who's responsible for the Tesla Semi project. Now, last year I recorded his presentation and put it on this channel. You guys seem to enjoy it. So hopefully we'll get a pretty cool update on the Tesla Semi project this year at ACT Expo. So join me for the full recorded presentation uh, from Dan Priestley on the Tesla Semi. We are excited to have back with us Dan Priestley. He's the senior manager for the Tesla Semi program. He's been with us here last year and uh, we're thrilled to have him back. He's here to give us uh, some updates and some new announcements and some new news around the Semi program, uh, which is their obviously Class 8 heavy duty electric truck product. Uh, as I'm sure many of you have seen, Tesla's uh, working on their plant, their production plant up in Nevada. We've started to see a few more semis out in the wild. We have one even down here on the show floor in, in the Watt EV booth, um, which is the first of, a, I think, a 40 unit order that, that Watt EV has placed with, with Tesla. Uh, last year here at ACT, we heard uh, from Dan that the production was planned for 50,000 units per year at the Nevada plant, so we're excited to hear an update on that. Uh, and really whatever else Dan is, is uh, able to share with us today. So um, as the head of the Tesla Semi program, Dan has held the, all the leadership roles really since the inception of the program, oversaw product development, engineering development, and now this commercialization and, and rollout of the product uh, at scale. So it's really great to have Dan back with us here at ACT Expo. If you could please help give him a warm welcome to our uh, ACT Expo main stage. Hi everyone. I'm happy to be back here at ACT Expo to share some updates on the semi program. Tesla remains just as committed and excited to bring semi to scale next year in 2026. Now, if you're hearing that other industry players might be reconsidering or scaling back some of their zero emission plans, I'm here to tell you that Tesla is charging forward. And so are our incredible customers. They understand the long-term value of electrification because the first principles remain true that electric trucks will offer the lowest total cost of ownership in freight transportation and movement. Now that's not to say this transformation isn't easy. There are several requirements both with Tesla and our partners to ensure success. We have to unlock and scale truck manufacturing and charging and our customers need to go big as well. That's by maximizing operational miles as well as scaling their own deployments. Now, last year I had the privilege of being here and conveying all the great work that my team does and the Tesla team more broadly does to talk about the importance of having the right product. We have the right product in the Tesla Semi. Now what we need to talk about are what are all the other things that it takes? What are all the other key aspects to enable industry-wide electrification of the Tesla Semi? The first step beyond having a product is a factory to build that product in. We are proud to be building semis in the United States and reinvesting our continuing expansion investment in Nevada on the Gigafactory Nevada campus. This factory at 1.7 million square feet will have a final annual capacity of 50,000 units per year. As you can see, structure is, the exterior of the building is largely complete and we're working on installing the internal utilities, and throughout the balance of this year, we'll be landing manufacturing equipment to enable production and ramp throughout 2026. Now, the volume, the commitment that we have, the desired goals in terms of scale, along with a capital efficient execution on both construction and manufacturing, enable a low cost product with compelling pricing for our customers. Now, we really believe in this, so much so that the first trucks off the line, as we've said before, will go into Tesla's own logistics and operations. We believe in the product, we believe in the mission. We are committed to electrifying our supply chain and will continue to encourage others that supply our factories, our third-party logistics providers, to do the same. But we think the economics will speak for themselves. Customer deliveries will then start thereafter and ramp throughout 2026, and we are excited that our early customers are already working now and preparing to take delivery next year. So the factory is coming, the factory is there, product will be rolling off of it. But we have a fleet today 
that we've been learning from and we've been evolving the product based on the learnings from that fleet. At 7.9 million miles accumulated, I was really hoping we'd get to eight before I stood up here, but not quite. But we have 26 vehicles with more than 100,000 miles on them. We are encouraged by the continued capability and performance of the vehicles as they perform real work in real operations. We've got trucks operating in dedicated, LTL, uh, outbound car hauling, food service, drainage, many others. The, the core features that our customers have come to love about the Semi are staying the same. We have a long range 500 mile product, a standard range 300 mile product. These vehicles not only offer best in class range, but also best in class weight and efficiency among EVs. So that's great, we learned a lot, but let's talk about what's upcoming and the product improvements from what we learned over all those miles and all those customer deployments. We have a strong culture of continuous improvement and we'll continue to iterate on our product. And sometimes this includes what seem like relatively minor updates, but we value customer feedback. For example, we have a new mirror design, better sight lines, better aerodynamics, better performance overall. On top of that, we added a drop glass. There's a lot of fixed infrastructure, whether it's gate operations or interacting with a port or a telecom. These will make drivers' lives easier. Now there's a score of other driver improvements that I'm not gonna get into today. There's, we can't give away everything. But operationally, there's many other uh, improvements and evolutions as well. The vehicle will be equipped with an MCS charge inlet, capable of more than one megawatt of charging. And then one other thing, we have a new HV battery. Now this battery uh, brings in our latest and greatest in terms of technology. It is cheaper to manufacture. And the best part is that it's actually less battery energy than in our current pilot production vehicles. But it maintains the same range. This is achieved through efficiency improvements that we're showing here, more than 7% at this point. And what that does is it enables a positive feedback loop where that lowers our cost, it lowers our weight, it makes a better product for the customer. We are going to continually chase every single watt hour and ensure that it's put to good and productive use. And more changes are coming. By the way, as a side note, this has come up in a couple of conversations, those battery cells are sourced domestically. We're very proud of our uh, cell partners as well as our uh, own cell capabilities. Now, it's one thing to have a vehicle product, but we also have to have a charging product as well, as well as then a product to enable more parts of the combination. So with that, I want to, I'm happy to talk about one innovation we alluded to a little bit last year, and that is the EPTO. So the electric power takeoff will enable the longer combination in the vehicle, or in the, the more to the trailer and the long combination to be electrified. This will bring in additional uh, capability to the space in electrifying additional equipment. The Tesla Semi will be able to support these directly through a wide variety of voltages, both DC and AC, as well as uh, have peak capability of more than 25 kilowatts. Now, one of the best applications for this is a climate-controlled trailer. There's a ton of stuff that's capable out there today, but it's all a standalone diesel operation. We're excited to support that directly from the Tesla Semi. So what you're seeing here on the graph is range consumed by the EPTO depending on power and operation time. Now, we understand that duty cycles vary, but reefers are a good example of an application that has relatively low power for a long period of time, but with like peak capability during a pull down, for example, that's critical to be able to support. And we are excited that the Tesla Semi is gonna be able to support the electrification of additional pieces of equipment and help transition broader swaths of the industry towards a fully electric solution. And now we wanna hear about other equipment needs. The space is incredibly diverse and all of you have different equipment that has to be powered for your application. We wanna hear what your requirements are, but we believe we have a very flexible and compelling solution to help electrify additional operations and parts of your overall combination. Now we have not limited the improvements and evolution to the vehicle itself. A big part of it is charging. Next year we'll be introducing our 1.2 megawatt charging solution enabled by Tesla's V4 version four charging hardware and product. This is a fully industrialized charging product 
that is shared with the Tesla passenger car business. This allows us to leverage the cost and value at scale. Most of the internals are exactly the same, just the cable and the connector and a few other little bits, but it allows us to both use our volume and scale to deploy charging for less, but also brings in reliability and uptime that those that have used the supercharged network have come to depend on. Now, when compared to the semi-charging on the ground today, this updated product has a significantly smaller footprint and requires fewer pieces of hardware. It reduces the overall footprint of the equipment space required by charging by more than 50%. This results in uh, maintaining more valuable space on the yard and less consumed by the equipment itself. The equipment is also highly configurable. We can pair it with one post for 1.2 megawatt charging that's dedicated, or we can do up to eight posts for a power sharing where multiple vehicles can charge in parallel. And don't be fooled by the fact that it's just a simple looking box. There is some next level engineering underneath this that enables winds across the board, whether it's for operators or for landowners. This hardware enables more flexibility, it's denser, it's less expensive, and has more efficient power conversion compared to today's semi-chargers. Now, we'll also be leveraging the charging service team, the same technicians, the same parts of the box, and the same service procedures to maintain these pieces of equipment that currently maintain our supercharger network. That network has an uptime of more than 99.95% reliability. And that is an experience that we want to bring over to the heavy duty side. Now, we understand that fast charging enables a lot of operations. It also enables a really great TCO. But along with fast charging, we're excited to have an integrated overnight charging product that's under in development now for customers that have a duty cycle that better matches an overnight or off shift charging operation. If it's not clear, it's charging is core to Tesla. And we are committed to enabling charging for every Tesla semi, which is why we're making a major public investment in public infrastructure. What you're seeing behind me is the very beginning of a dedicated, publicly available charging network for semis. These 46 sites are already in progress and represent more than 300 megawatt capable posts that will start going into the ground this year with many more to fall in 2026. Now, some of our dedicated inter internet sleuths have actually already started finding these and there will be more to come. They're really good and it's really, you know, do a good job of keeping track of what we're doing. So keep your eyes peeled. You'll find some more coming. But this is just the public side. We're also working with our customers who are investing in private infrastructure. Now, similar to passenger car charging, the truck behind the fence at your domicile has operational efficiencies and generally lower costs. But we recognize that not, that approach is not reasonable for every fleet. Some fleets may not own their yards, or they have legitimate space constraints, or even power constraints at a given address. A reliable, low-cost, publicly accessible charging network is critical transitioning from diesel. In addition, public charging can serve as a range extension option for fleets that want to go farther than domicile charging alone would allow. It also can serve as a bridge solution while we're waiting for infrastructure or utility or even just general facility upgrades. As you can see, we're putting charging where trucks already operate. These stations will be along truck routes and in major industrial areas. In some cases, at some truck stops that you probably already frequent on a regular basis. Now we aim to offer the lowest cost of energy to ensure significantly lower operating costs than diesel. This is key. Overall, Tesla is committed to making sure that every semi has a charger solution, be it fast, overnight, private, or public. The bottom line is that we will enable operations with low cost, reliable, and available charging. Now, all of this is just a glimpse into the many efforts and investments Tesla is undertaking to enable semi at scale. There's a lot more that I have not shared today, and the next year will be very, very exciting. We want you to come talk to us. We need partners to go along this journey with us. Come collaborate with our business development team so that we can help provide a solution for you. We have great products at compelling pricing ready to share with you. The future is bright and electric. Thank you.